Hi, today we're going to study about biomaterials uh, in biomedical engineering. So we want to understand the definition and types of biomaterial and the concept of biocompatibility and in historical uh, context. For, and also we will discuss about biological responses to external biomaterials. So first, uh, the, there's an artistic uh, form of biomaterials uh, like this uh, figure. So this is uh, uh, an artistic illustration. Uh, however, um, so you see the heart and the lungs and kidneys and liver and stomach. Uh, this is not really uh, true, uh, but just showing uh, uh, the future direction. So the search for artificial replacements for failing our human organs. Um, so we are searching for these artificial organs which can replace uh, our uh, organ. There are some success stories. For example, hemodialysis for replacing kidney function. But think about the hemodialysis machine, which cannot be this small, but it's actually a big equipment and uh, the patient has to go to the clinic and uh, a couple of times a week uh, so that to, to, to filter out uh, his or her uh, blood, replacing uh, the kidney function. So that's uh, not very convenient yet, which means we still do not have the, this artificial kidney. And artificial hip prosthesis. So now we have artificial hip, and also for people who have a problem in the eye uh, or lens, there are artificial lenses for cataract patients. Cataract is the, the symptom that the lens become opaque so that the patient cannot see. Uh, my parents also have this cataract surgery, which is one of the most common surgeries uh, in our country. However, these are a good success stories, but uh, are limited. You can see these are a relatively simple aspect of biomaterial. But the point is there are no proven artificial heart, artificial liver, or artificial pancreas. So which poses a great challenge at the same time an opportunity for biomedical engineers like us to develop these more sophisticated uh, organs which potentially can benefit uh, many, many people who have uh, problems in their organ function. So let's uh, first uh, see what is biomaterials. A, uh, there are some historic definitions I want to uh, introduce. A non-viable uh, material used in a medical device, which is intended to interact with our biological systems. Another way of looking at it is synthetic or natural materials that are used in context with biological systems. So for the biomaterial, there, there are requirements for biomaterial because that is in contact with our biological system. So it has to be non-harmful to the living body in which they are placed. So that we call as whether it's compatible or not. So that's called biocompatibility. So frequently, biomaterials are polymers or metals. So polymers are more like soft aspects of replacement and hard aspects such as bone, uh, there are metal. So biocompatibility is the ability of a material to perform with an appropriate host response in a specific application. Host response means our body's natural uh, response. For example, like immune system uh, against some, uh, some foreign body, foreign material, uh, which is coming into our body. And biocompatibility is the ability to be in contact with a living system without producing an adverse effect. So I want to discuss about some history. So there are uh, pretty good uh, uh, review, his, his historical highlights, which is related to biomaterial, especially bionics and related medicine. You can see it starts from even 
uh, like over 500 years ago until today. So let me go through a little bit of these histories. So for about 500 years ago, uh, there were iron prosthetic hands. So for those who, who lost hands with a flexible finger joints uh, was found. And about 200 years ago, development of endoscope uh, for minimally invasive surgery. We developed an endoscopy. And about more than 75 years ago, uh, introduction of silver amalgam for dental fillings. In 1888, first report of contact lens to correct vision. In 1905, an um, early attempt of an artificial hip replacement for those who have a problem in the hip joint. And only after quite recent, about 1949, the role of immune system uh, in tissue rejection is identified. What do we mean by tissue rejection? If there's an artificial biomaterial getting into the tissue, then our immune system will sometimes reject. Or when we do a transplantation of an organ from other, uh, other uh, person to a host, then the host system will recognize it as a foreign and try to reject that organ. That is a, a big problem still in uh, organ transplantation. In 1951, the first artificial heart valve was implanted. This is a big story that because uh, this heart valve issue is uh, very, uh, it can be very fatal. So 1953, now developing heart lung machine for when there needs a heart, whole heart transplantation, during the time we need to replace the heart and the lung function. So we did need a heart lung machine. In 1980, the first successful single channel cochlear implant was uh, used in a child. So cochlear implant is artificial, um, artificial ear replacement. Uh, but there's, it, this is only single channel. Nowadays, we have like eight channel or 24 channels available. 1982, the implantation of a permanent total artificial heart was implanted. Of course, it wasn't very successful at the beginning. Uh, I think still the total artificial heart cannot be like permanent. 1993, FDA, US FDA approved the first left ventricular assist device, uh, which is used as a bridge to total heart transplantation. 